Resto mods are gaining in popularity by the day. More people are enthused about them, want to buy them, and therefore more people are cropping up wanting to build them. They're obviously the established manufacturers, the vanguard of the movement. People like Singer and Eagle and Alphaholics. But what do you do if you want to break into the whole scene? You could be more Resto, you could be more mod, you could be more down the design route or the engineering route. Or you could differentiate yourself with a bag. Welcome to Helm, the latest entrant onto the Resto Mod field of play. The car in question is a Series 1 Jaguar E Type, nothing new there, but with added luggage, which we'll come back to in a bit. First, to tell us a little more about both himself and the company is Helm's founder and director, Shadeen Batik. As a kid, I would, um, I would, I'd get in trouble at school in Jamaica, so I'll, I'll get smacked for, for for not listening and drawing, <laughs> and I'll always be drawing cars, always cars. From then, I've always, I've always um, wanted to be a car designer. That's always been my dream. I came to the UK when I was small and I studied art and I studied design and I've done industrial product design. So I'm, I'm, I'm a designer by, well, background really. And um, from there, I don't know how, <laughs> but it led to, 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 to here, to where we are now. Funnily enough, we didn't start with E-types because um, I'm, you know, a real car guy, so anything special. And at the time, my special cars were SLs, um, in particular the R107. We started with one, and since then I, I, I owned um, 18. <laughs> um, uh, say, say around three years in, uh, that's when I, I had my first E-Type. And uh, from then, it's just gone from good to better to better and um, and now we, we pretty much know the cars inside out and that led to Helm. The pure restoration and servicing side of the business which started off specialising in paintwork but is now pretty much a one-stop shop still exists as Automa. Helm came about partly after talking to customers about the sort of upgrades they wanted on their E-types but also after Batik had owned a Bentley Continental GT. He decided he wanted to bring some of that car's sense of occasion to the interior of an E-Type, as he'd always felt that it didn't live up to the rest of the car. He also believes that cars like the E-Type need to be preserved. We're building something to something that is not throw away. This car, if taken care of, will last another 60 years. And that, that's what we're building now. Just 20 will be produced and who knows how much they will be worth in 60 years' time. If you want one now, it will cost you a cool £420,000. And I know the price is high. It's not for everyone. It isn't. Um, but when you step inside this car, you feel that a human being made it. You know, you can feel that it's, it's hand-built. I think that's, that's, the, that's the brand, Helm. That's what it's about. People. That then is the story and philosophy behind the business. But what about the actual product? Let's have a look at some of the mod parts of this Resto mod. One of the cleverest bits because doors on old cars always shut terribly easily. You end up slamming them or sort of, no, don't slam them. So you never quite know this. Soft close. I mean, it's brilliant. Under the aluminium bonnet, we've still got a 3.8 litre straight six as you'd have in a Series 1 E-Type. Internals have been lightened though, uh, forged pistons, and although it looks initially like it's running on carburettors, that's actually fuel injection hidden away in there, which is rather clever. Putting out about 300 brake horsepower and around about 300 pounds foot of torque. Also, whilst we're under here, um, air conditioning unit hidden away in here, and they've got wider tracks, in fact, front and rear, and larger disc brakes at the front as well. Stylistically, overall, the design has remained very true to the original. There are very few tweaks, but one of the ones you might notice is just around the front here. So we've got rid of the overriders, the upright parts of the front bumper here, and it's just now one 
flowing piece around there, which is rather nice, just a little more elegant. Worth mentioning the badge down here, which has been made in a jewellers in Ascot, not far from here. The lights too, they look, well, like standard Lucas headlights, but they've been updated to LEDs, so they, they actually show you the way ahead for a change. All this as well is, is nickel plated, uh, rather than being sort of chrome, which is a bit harsh, it is just a bit, bit softer, there's almost a sort of a golden tint to it. What really sets this car apart for me though, is the interior, and specifically I suppose the materials in the interior. It's leather, fairly obviously throughout here. Uh, it's a semi-aniline leather, so that means that there's less pigmentation in it. It means the, the natural grain shows through more and it's not quite as hard wearing, but it feels beautifully soft and then matched with this suede here as well. There is a, well, there's just a, a real luxury to it and it should um, get a lovely patina to it over the years as well. It is, it's just absolutely beautiful. And things like this, the sort of the little toggle switches done in leather there. Key as well, not leather, but um, copper. Lovely weight to that just there. But it's the fact that this has been done in collaboration with Bill Amberg. Now, it might not be a name familiar to you, it wasn't familiar to me, but I think it's a very clever thing um, because when you're starting up a company, if you put somebody else's name on it, and it's very well known within certain circles, he's produced this fabulous rocket bag which is, um, is in the VNA, it's in the um, Museum of Modern Art um, over in, in America. It means that this car's already got the seal of approval from somebody who is recognised, albeit in another field. They've, they've trimmed this, Bill Amberg studio, uh, so these little bits here, they've all gone up to the studio, but then they've obviously worked with uh, a car trimmer to do the rest of it because they don't usually do that, but it's all been overseen by him. It's a clever idea and it's something that I haven't really seen before as such. I suppose we've seen some collaborations with people like Paul Smith before, but this car appeared in GQ first. And it's the sort of thing where I can see people saying, I want that bag and the car that goes with it. That is something that <laughs> to the car enthusiast might seem anathema really, but it, obviously if it's backed up then by fantastic engineering, it just elevates the car, makes it stand out from the crowd. And I think that's very clever. Of course, somewhere pleasant to sit and a nice set of luggage doesn't make a good car. Otherwise, we'd all be driving around in hotel lobbies. So I needed to go for a spin. To drive, this is, well, it's like an E-Type, because that's what it is, and it hasn't been overly modernised. The engine is wonderfully strong. Really smooth, but just with ample amounts of torque. Gearbox too, nice and easy to use. Pedals, well, they're in the original position, so they're not quite so easy to heel and toe and work your way around. The ergonomics in general are, well, they're very serious one E-type, as you can probably tell. I am as part of six foot five, and yeah, it's a good job that I sort of punch myself over a bit and stoop. I do fit though, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, and it is worth it for that view over that magnificent bonnet. The gear shift has got a wonderful precision to it, it's beautifully mechanical. and it's not at all recalcitrant like some of these ones can be. I always find it intriguing, sort of the, uh, the amount that a car is resto and the amount that a car is mod. This is very much at the resto end of the equation. The most modern feeling thing, in fact, is probably the brakes, which are wonderfully strong. And let's face it, they are the things that you probably want to upgrade first on any classic car. Through the corners, well, again, it's very old E-type, so there's not a lot of sort of 
precision to the steering as such, despite the fact they've upgraded all the bushes and it's got thicker torsion beams and things like that. But this is very much an old E-type in terms of its, its chassis and suspension. And that feel that when you go through the corners, you've got that sort of bit of positive camber with the sort of the top of the wheel out. It just sort of feels like they sort of still tuck under a bit. It really is hard to convey just how luxurious this interior feels. The leather is so soft and the smell, oh, which is absolutely wonderful. There is something particularly hedonistic about the perfume of the helm's interior. It's a heavier, richer smell that would probably require the skill of Patrick Suskind to fully describe. Of course, in automotive terms, it's still no Castrol R, but then what is? It's certainly plenty quick enough, this. They're really well rev, but equally it feels like the sort of engine you just you sort of surf the mid-range with this. To that extent, that's a, you know, again, adds that feeling of uh, California, Highway 1, smell of this interior wafting along. That's where I think this fits. But you might now be thinking, well, is it all style over substance? And it's not. This is not a car for sort of, if you really, really want the driving experience to be more modern brought up to date, made quicker, more precise, this is not the type of resto mod for you. This is much more of a, a cruiser. The suspension is really nice, the ride's really nice, I should feel over the bigger bumps there, soaks it all up well. But this is definitely a luxury item. Just bags of fun though. Get it, bags of fun, bags of fun. Sorry about that, couldn't resist. Helms is an interesting, innovative take on the Resto mod that I feel will attract entirely different, possibly predominantly non-automotive admirers to the E-Type. It's not particularly for me, but then I don't think it's meant to be. And I admire the thought behind it and the work and bags that have gone into it to make it stand out in the ever-growing Resto mod crowd.